Okay, so yeah, a little bit of a uh, different and interesting uh, challenge for us this week, getting ready for the cast game. Uh, obviously the boys that went over on the South Africa trip, they had a long haul flight back on Sunday, um, which brought us back, we got back to Sandy Park midday uh, on uh, on Monday. Um, so we very much had to, um, had to think on our feet uh, and get the boys ready um, for a short turnaround uh, against, uh, against cast. And it was fantastic on Tuesday to bring all of the players back together, the lads that had stayed here in the UK and the lads that have gone away and get the squad back together and there was a great amount of excitement from everyone in how we did our Tuesday preparation and what we did um, with uh, you know finishing on the pitch with a really really good rugby session. Hi, my name's Greg Fislau. Um, I joined, joined Exeter from WAS um, around October-ish. Dad played rugby in Plymouth, um, which is where I originally grew up. Um, he, he was sort of training me to, to be a back growing up, but that's not the way it turned out. I sort of lost my pace. <laughs> my dad was training me to play rugby since I could crawl pretty much. Uh, I originally I played in Was Academy as a hooker yeah. um, on the 16s, and then sort of going through that, they said I was too tall to be too tall to be a hooker. So I moved, got moved to back row. Um, I sort of just naturally drifted into the number eight position, I guess. So I did sort of under 16. I did everything sort of a year young. Um, go went through the Was DPP. I'm not sure if they do that in Exeter, but it's sort of like development at like under 14s, under 15s, and then you go from there to the under 16s. Um, so I sort of skipped the DPP stuff. I did a little bit, but um, got brought into the academy uh, a year young. Went through the under 16s and then under 18s. Did two years of the under 18s and then got signed for WAS when I was 18, yeah. My dad have talked loads about um, Sort of playing, playing Premiership rugby. Um, uh, he so he predicted 19, um, but I, I wasn't. I was sort of just keeping my head down and just try training as hard as I could, and hopefully that'll get me somewhere. Today we've gone back into the gym. Um, there was a great vibe in the gym. Lads lifting really, really well. Um, you know, we've gone into a little bit of uh, real strength work with the players now. So the strength phase the players have now gone to, they're cutting down on their rep ranges uh, in the gym, so we're piling on a little bit more weight uh, and cutting down on reps, um, so they're actually lifting a little bit heavier at the moment, uh, which they really, really enjoy because they all like a, uh, like a bit of competition, see who can lift the heaviest, uh, see who's the strongest. Um, so we're moving, uh, moving that forward. I think young Pat Schickling bench pressed 180 kilos this morning. Um, which uh, obviously I weigh 80 kilos, um, so uh, it's uh, more than double myself. Um, so that just puts a little bit of uh, a little bit of an idea of uh, what these guys are pushing at the moment. And this is only the first week we've done it, so we'll expect those to uh, very much go up. Nice, Kenny. Oh. 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 
uh, and they all got around each other uh, and lifted really, really heavy and well uh, and got into an exciting game. Uh, there was a little bit of a contrast in the weather going from 33 degrees back to minus one uh, was one of the main uh, comical uh, joking points. Everyone was running outside to see the snow this morning during the weight session. Seeing snow. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> How good is this? Just stop frolicking. <laughs> Typical <laughs> South African. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, a bit of a different week this week, having come back from uh, from South Africa, not least because of the temperature difference. Uh, but yeah, going from from that and taking into account the the travel, uh, the long haul flight, uh, the overnight flight, uh, and getting back and obviously losing that first day's training, so it's important that that we just build up in the week to, towards the cast game uh, in a sensible way that just allows the guys to, to get the travel and the journey and last week's game out of them but also gets us into the right place to perform this weekend. Um, in many ways it's quite nice because actually it takes some of the the norm, some of the normal things you do in a week, some of the, the pressure off on getting those done allows you actually to do uh, some more tech stuff, uh, some more low key stuff, some more one on one time, one on three time, mini unit stuff. Um, so in a way it's perfect timing for us because quite, quite clearly we need to do a little bit of work around some of our set pieces. Stripping back to our foundations, it's sometimes you can go a period, and we've had several of these over over the last uh, few years, really. Where you know, you, if you don't, if you take your eye off the ball for a little bit, uh, or you don't put the time into into a foundation element, and um, they can drift surprisingly quickly, especially as you get into games, either short weeks, uh, changes, people going away on internationals, that sort of thing, turnover of players. So it's important sometimes just to revisit your foundations and uh, check back against them. You almost check it back against your basics at the start of the season or in the off season and compare them and go, gosh, how is that sort of moved that far away? And sometimes that's because the game changes or you need to. And sometimes it's just because you just need to refocus. So clearly that's a, a major target for us at the moment is, is is transforming our scrum particularly uh, back into something that's a great source of possession but also a way of providing pressure onto the opposition. All I know is that front row and Rob do a very good job in preparing, preparing themselves through the week. Um, there's a big they're putting the starting to put a big emphasis on sort of back row, um, having playing playing a bigger bigger part in the scrum now because um, obviously it's it's an eight man scrum not not a five three man scrum um, and yeah like back row players like Dave Simo Chris obviously all all good players for me to for me to learn from and and just watch. So there's a real balance here in terms of, of what you're trying to achieve because obviously you want to win every game that we're, that we're playing. Um, so trying to balance out what the, what the best approach or the best eight guys to take the field uh, to start the game uh, is, is, uh, is it can be quite tricky, especially if you're trying to develop and bring through a young player like Greg. Um, 
on the one hand, Greg absolutely deserves his, his selections into the, into the 23, and I'm sure we'll see him start in the, in the period coming up as well. Um, he's turned up as a really, really very, very fine young player. Um, however, there's stuff that you just don't know because you've not learnt it yet. Uh, and it's really important not to fill that bucket up so that it becomes overflowing and actually slows people down. So there's a bit of a balance to just letting him have his head and get on with it, uh, but also the things that you need to know to, to function in the team and what roles you need to, to fill. Uh, so that's made easier with consistency of selection and, and we have had a bit of consistency for a few weeks, which has been very nice. Um, <laughs> obviously that's going to change next week because Depending on when this goes out, there's a lively likelihood that uh, once again I'll be saying goodbye to people on a Sunday and then seeing them for team run on a Friday. Um, particularly in the set piece area, that is very challenging. Um, it's an incredibly contested, very, very contested, sort of funneled into a very small area area of the game. It just makes it very tough if you haven't got the time to, to prep. Uh, you can make things super simple, but and that does work, but when you want to score tries, or you want five yard attack, that sort of thing, there's, there is a complexity there that you need to, to build in. Uh, so with the young players, it's very much getting them the experience, letting them learn their role, uh, letting them get it wrong, and the old players as well in, in, that, in that sense, new callers, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then working through it afterwards, you know, it's like any area of the game, if you don't take any risks, there's a good chance that you won't get too many rewards. Uh, so getting that balance right is really key. Like sort of in that moment as well, it's it's big for us as a pack. Um, sort of just assert our dominance um, in a way. Um, I think it's also a chance to catch my breath as well. <laughs> I think it's refreshing the squad. I think the lads that came on uh, against the balls did really well when they came on, uh, and quite clearly, we, you know, we've been attracting quite a few pens in that area. So we've got to change the picture a little bit. So, uh, you know, there's a number of reasons, and it's never just about the front three. I think, uh, like, like a lot of these things, it's often your tight head that gets penalised, but the seven other guys who decide he's going forward. And uh, whilst you do need to have a certain level of uh, of individuality in there, you know, you've got to be able to keep the scrum up, you've got to have a, a good focus on, you, on your own tech. It is an eight-man thing. Uh, and our individual bit hasn't really been the problem, it's our eight-man bit that's been the problem, in, in the sense that at any one point we've probably had about two-thirds really focused. So that's a major work on for us. So whilst the front three is changing, um, it's not too much of a drama because they're expecting great things from them. Um, however, it is change uh, again, and uh, you know that's that's a feature of the game now. I mean, we're adjusting a little bit of how we prep for games in some areas because the reality is now there's probably only been one or two weeks this season where the team we've named on a Monday or Tuesday in house is the same on a Friday. So there's quite a bit of adjustment really that we're making around training and how we prep for games, uh, how the guys prep for, for the calls particularly, um, because that is now a feature with smaller squads, uh, with international clubs, with all the things that affect it. Um, you just don't get to go from one week to the next very often with the same group. So we're adjusting to that uh, and there's some good signs we're making progress in there. So, uh, so that'll be a thing we've got to take into account going forward. So changing the guys in some respects should freshen it up rather than changing what we do. That's certainly some of the 
things we've been focusing on is making sure those foundation elements should look the same no matter who's in there. This game obviously is a crucial game for us this going weekend and that's part of the excitement around the camp. Um, you know, we, uh, we luckily picked up a bonus point um, over at Pretoria at the weekend uh, which gave us qualification which is fantastic and obviously this weekend we'll be uh, going flat out to ensure we try and get that home last 16. Definitely, Sandy Park is definitely a special place to play. Um, the crowd gets behind the boys so much, um, and yeah, is is I'm very grateful to be to be playing here. Uh, to be honest, like I think after the Saracens game, I I made my debut against Saris away, and that game I was I was shaking the whole week, um, pretty much. Um, but I feel like after, after making, after playing that game, um, sort of dealing with the nerves has become a lot easier. Um, not to say that I'm not excited or anything, but it's just in terms of like being a bit frightened is is sort of out of the window now. I think. It's the, the danger in a way is you talk about it all week because you know we obviously had the discussion you've got to deal with it as a discussion with the lads uh, and as a group because the reality is we don't know who they'll send best guess is that with them being out of the competition they might not that they probably won't send their first team that would takes an awful lot of pressure off them and sides that play with no consequence and there are a couple in the premiership at the moment since relegation has gone sides that play with no consequence are very very dangerous because there's no consequence so if they just wing the ball around, it's quite hard, it's quite difficult to prep, certainly defensively for a side that's unpredictable. Um, so you get two things with that, if we're tough and we are very good on our foundations, uh, that will provide an enormous amount of opportunity for us to score. The, the danger is, is that you go loose too, and then what you end up is, is a potentially very entertaining match with little quality in it in terms of uh, ball retention and it's just one end to the other. As I say, that can be entertaining but it also can be incredibly frustrating for a side that you know is really looking to win. So our, our focus will very much be, you know, we want to win the game and we want to get five tries, uh, four tries, we want to get the five points. So that, that's our focus regardless of who they send, you know, we know how to do that and that has to remain our focus. You decide how you're going to get those tries, you know how you do those, you know your role and then you commit flat out to that and that, that'll be what we'll be looking to do. Good scrum when everything, when the set and the hit is, is right, perfectly timed, and everyone's sort of in unison, and you, you can feel yourself starting to creep forwards. I'm sort of very much just just happy to happy to be involved, um, trying to play as, as often as I can, um, and when I come on, trying to just have as 
big as an impact, a big impact on the game as I can. Um, but as a team, I think obviously we're we're in a we're in a decent spot right now. Um, but these next two games definitely big opportunity to sort of open up the front a bit. We've talked about, um, and obviously like boys leaving at the end of the season, I think we, we definitely want to make this make this a special end, end to, to their career. I haven't, I haven't been here long and I'm, I'm probably going to miss all the boys that are leaving as well, heaps as well. So. But I'm sort of, yeah, I am, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't expect to come here and enjoy it as much as I am. Um, it is, it is something long term, I reckon. But don't want to jinx anything, we'll just take one day at a time and see where, see where we go. <laughs>